and wants our obligation never to forget. Because every victim had a story, a family, a childhood, the future cut short. And as you go uh, in these halls, in Yad Vashem, you see these individual stories. And this is made more poignant and more heart-wrenching by just thinking about each single person or a single person. Then thinking about the multiplication of the heart. And indeed, in a few uh, short years, six million of our people were wiped away, literally incinerated. And the forces of evil had built an industry of mass murder. So as we remember the victims and this crime, we must never forget the roots of our greatest disaster, the insatiable hatred for the Jewish people. This hatred culminated in murder, but it began with intolerance. Well, the Holocaust, thank God, is behind us, but the hatred and intolerance that drove it is not. And anti-Semitism, which is the world's oldest hatred, is experiencing a revival in the enlightened West. You can see this in European capitals. It's just unbelievable. The rise of anti-Semitism, the resurgence of it, that is happening. And few would have imagined that this would be possible a few years ago. It's true that governments have shown responsibility, and on the whole, have taken this up. Eastern Europe and in Western Europe alike. But it is also true that this hatred is bubbling, coming out of the, these cracks, coming out in the open again. Yet, as disturbing as this is, the greatest danger that we face of uh, the hatred for the Jewish people and the Jewish state comes from the East. It comes from Iran. It comes from the Ayatollah regime that is fanning these flames and calling outright for the destruction of the Jewish state. Now I want you to, uh, I want you to think about a regime that openly declared its intention to eliminate every black person, every gay person, every European. I think the entire world would be outraged, and rightly so. But when a regime merely calls to wipe out every Israeli, which is what they say, day in, day out, their most prominent leaders, they say, what do we encounter? A deafening silence. Now that may change. I hope it will change. I believe it will change. Because I spoke a few days ago to President Trump, and he spoke about the Iranian aggression. He spoke about Iran's commitment to destroy Israel. He spoke about the nature of this nuclear agreement and the danger it poses. We spoke about it together. I'm talking now not only in political terms, I'm talking about every person in the world, any person of conscience should speak out against the resurgence of the same attitude that decades ago openly said we're out to destroy the Jewish people and today the same attitude that says we're out to destroy the Jewish people of Israel, we're out to destroy the Jewish state, it must encounter forceful, consistent, powerful resistance in words and also in deeds. As Prime Minister of Israel, of course, I will not be silent, I haven't been silent and we don't intend to be inactive either. We don't merely intend to speak out, but we will take all the measures we need to defend ourselves. And we will take all the measures necessary to prevent Iran from getting the means of mass murder to carry out their horrible plans. We cannot and will not be silent in the face of Iran's stated aim of destroying Israel. But we, uh, we also know that the issue is not merely Jewish state or the Jewish people. Because we've seen that this hatred, when, going, when, when it goes unchecked, spreads around the world. And in fact, in many ways, that is what has happened. 
So it's up to the forces of civilization, the forces of uh, conscience, the forces of responsibility to join together to stop this process. The regime that spawned the Holocaust ended up in the dustbin of history. That's a lesson for Iran. It's a lesson to every enemy of the Jewish people and the Jewish state. We will never forget the victims. We will never allow another Holocaust to take place. I take uh, a company, a lot of foreign leaders who come to this place, Blue Yad Vashem. We go through the halls. We see the exhibits. They're visibly fake. And when we come out, I say to that leader, whoever it would be, I say, you know, as Prime Minister of Israel, I have one job. To make sure that we will never need more institutions like Yad Vashem. And that's what we all have to be committed to. Thank you for your help and your participation in this global and indispensable effort. Thank you all. Thank you.